the longest, most challenging, most brutal off-road race in America, Vegas Torino, getting ready to start. Guys, taking you inside the sport, I want to introduce you to a young man who is a, a prodigy when it comes to off-road racing. He's only 20 years old. He's already got more than 10 championships overall. He's qualified number one in the 6100 category. It's a real driver's class. It's a spec class. And he was so fast in qualifying, he just missed the top unlimited truck. This guy's amazing. Running with Ryan Hancock, who's another amazing story. He's a serious points contender. Let's go back, let's meet him. We're gonna find out what makes Brock Hager so good. We're gonna find out how excited Ryan Hancock is to have Brock on his side. Stay with us all throughout this video. Hey, there are the number one qualifiers, Ryan Hancock, Mr. Brock Hager. Ryan, you went out and got a hired gun who knows how to get it done in short course. How did you guys get together as teammates? Uh, well, Jake put us kind of together, uh, Jake Glesko, and uh, Brock's been with me before, and uh, he does, does an awesome job. Now, how many years have you been in Vegas uh, Uh This is probably my sixth, sixth race, Vegas Torino. What's your best all-time finish? Uh, we finished second. Okay, have you ever qualified on the pole before? I have not. Well, how exciting is that? It's very exciting. We're ready to roll. Any big changes to the truck from qualifying to race day? Uh, no, no. Okay, because I heard a few of the guys saying that there's different setups for qualifying and you guys just uh, race, race what you got? Yeah, that's what we do. Excellent. And Ryan, how old are you? I am 44. Out of, where are you out of? Uh, Yuma, Arizona. Yuma, Arizona, excellent. Yeah. Mr. Hager. Congratulations, this is not unfamiliar territory for you. You qualified number one. I heard qualifying was dusty, it was rough. How'd you do it? Uh, it wasn't rough, you know, normal, compared to the normal Apex, but uh, you know, it definitely had some dust. It was at night, so that made it that made it challenging, but you know, I gotta give it up to Best in the Desert just for, you know, trying to do something new and giving us something different. I think it was, uh, it was cool for a change. Obviously, you know, no matter what happens, we're all gonna have our complaints. What I, you know, whether it's day or night or dust or not. So, but um, you know, we went out there. We we went out there and just kind of did what we were planning on. We were hoping to get the pole, and we ended up actually second overall in trophy trucks. I think we're two tenths off of Cameron for the lead. So that was kind of cool, just to kind of show where these trucks are going. I mean, they're they're pretty much a trophy truck with a small motor nowadays. So it's uh, it's cool to see where they're at, and um, you know, I wish uh, wish everyone good luck. And, can't wait to see everyone finish. How's this truck compared to what you run over in short course? Uh, it's a total different thing, but uh, this truck's actually very similar to the truck I raced last year. Okay. I won the championship in. So it's cool, it's kind of the same same stuff, just uh, different body, different wrap, and and uh, you know, it's it's fun, we're out here. How many times have you won Best in the Desert Championships? Uh, three, I've won the past three in a row. So past. I've only raced it three, and I've gone three so far. So I've been fortunate with that. and. Um, you know, Ryan's obviously going for the championship with him, so it's uh, it's fun to split some driving with them at the races that I can drive, and hopefully, you know, he gets that championship. You know, I'll probably count it as one of mine. <laughs> That's amazing. Just so to refresh my memory, how many championships total? I think we added up 20, know. right? There's, there's all kinds of them. I think 10 or something or 12. I don't know. And how old are you now? 20. 20. Okay, so you're to get 10 before 20, that's pretty impressive. Uh, today, strategy, how long do you plan to drive? Um, I think I'm gonna go to about 360 or 70, somewhere, somewhere up there in the threes. So um, that's our plan. And uh, obviously Ryan's gonna get in. Uh, Jordan's gonna stay in the truck the whole time. So it'll, it'll be good. Jordan will be familiar with everything, and um, you know Ryan will get in and do what he needs to do and bring it on home, hopefully. Now, when you talk plans at a race like this, are things subject to change? If if you feel really good, could you come on the radio and say, you know what, I wanna, I wanna keep going. I'm making good time. Um, yes and no, we'll see. I mean, obviously if, um, you know, if it goes to as planned, I will get out and Ryan will get in and bring it in. But, uh, you know, if something changes and, and Ryan feels like it's better for me to stay in, I'm sure he's gonna give me that good old thumbs up and let me go for it. So, um, no, we'll see. Uh, we don't really know yet if I'm getting in or out. So, um, you know, we're just gonna, Very we're cool. gonna see what we do and where we end up and uh, see how it plays out. Now, Brock, if you could, could you give me a quick little tour of the cockpit over here and oh, show yeah. me what it's like? 
inside a 6100 truck. Look at all these electronics. What are we looking at? Yeah, so this is uh, all the controls. This is all the temp stuff. And then this is obviously the GPS, which will have course and notes. And uh, Jordan actually uses a lead nav system. So it's, a, it's an iPad with another similar setup. And uh, that one actually shows kind of the terrain. It's more of like, uh, kind of like your phone when you hit satellite, so. That one's always cool, and then obviously that's uh, mine and Ryan's side over there. We don't really have any cool stuff over there, so. What's it like to be in the driver's seat for 300 plus miles through this brutal desert? Um, you know, it's fun. You just kind of get it in, you get in a little groove, and uh, you don't realize how many miles you've done until, you know, usually when uh, something bad happens and you're having to get out, that's when it starts to play a toll on you and not be as fun. But besides that, it's, it's fun. Obviously this desert, isn't too rough. The Vegas Torino race isn't rough at all. It's more of a lot of roads. There'll be a lot of silt. It's gonna be very dusty. So it'll be, uh, you know, for us, obviously we qualified pretty up there with the trophy truck stuff. So I would love to try to start up there, but obviously we have to start behind all the trophy trucks in one car. So we'll be, uh, we'll be in dust for majority of the day, just trying to get by those guys. That... I heard the finish is just, just brutal is what we heard. How would you assess the finish? Um, I've heard it's brutal. I've actually never done it. Whoa, okay. I've been fortunate to get out before then because uh, I don't hear nothing but bad stuff about it. So, um, Ryan, will, you know, Ryan's uh, good. He'll uh, he'll keep all four tires on it and uh, bring it on. Now, you talked about ho hoping that you don't get out. Let's take a look behind you real quick back here. This is all the stuff you carry, but all the stuff you hope you don't have to touch yeah, today. Tell me a little bit about what we got. Yeah, obviously we got uh, two spare tires, we got jacks, we got some oil back here, we got a drive shaft, and uh, it's gonna hit inside. We have some door bags that we normally carry some parts, some, you know, belt pulley stuff, motor stuff, steering, but uh, that's more of just for looks. You know, we never want to get back in here and try to take this out, so hopefully it goes as planned and uh, we'll stay in the seat the whole time and just hand it off to Ryan and uh, keep carrying on. Brock, you find so much success out here, short course, desert, everything. What do you think it is that makes you so successful? Um, I don't know. I mean, I've, uh, I've pretty much done this my whole life. I've done it since, I think I've raced since I was about seven. And, uh, you know, I was just thinking about it. I've never missed one Luxo off-road race. So I've been to every single one of those, which is, you know, we do 12 to 16 a year. So I'm always doing that. And then, uh, you know, I've been fortunate the past three years to run some desert and had some had some good results out of that which is which is fun you know it's just a total different you know side of racing it's you know short courses on one side of the spectrum of the short track and setups and stuff is out here you know you're going for the, the long mileage and stuff so it's uh it's totally different but it's uh it's fun you know you just uh keeps you busy with all the stuff and i see that the more i drive it's uh the better off i am and obviously i mean there's so much else behind it it's not really me you know it's the team, it's the truck, it's the parts you have in it. That's kind of, that's a lot of who decides uh, who you really are. And I know in short course, you get to take it to the finish line. Is it a strange mentality when you, you jump out and the race is not complete and then you just have to root on your teammate to take it across the finish line? Is that strange for you? Uh, no, it's not bad. I mean, it's, uh, it's kind of, it's kind of fun. You know, I've, uh, you know, Parker, we, with me and Ryan, we actually did the opposite. So he qualified, he started and I finished and I wasn't really a fan of that. I like to uh, I like to do the qualifying, get us a good spot, and uh, I like to start the race. So that way, I kind of know where the truck is when I get out, and uh, you know I try to leave it in good hands for the next driver, and at least I know where it's kind of at, and uh, you know what to expect for the rest of the race. As versus you know someone else driving it, I get in it, you know I don't really know where the truck's at. It could be worse condition or better, and. Uh, you know, I kind of just get out and uh, let them do their thing. Well, I got great news for you because I talked to Donald Jackson and he said new this year, first 10 miles of this course, major, major passing lanes. So I know you're going to love that yeah, as a short yeah. course guy. You're starting behind these trophy trucks. How aggressive are you going to be at the start? Uh, not too bad. I mean, there's that's the first 10 miles. There's, you know, tons of miles after that. And uh, this race is actually one of the one races I've never won in the States. This one's always got me every year in the past three years. And um, so I don't know, it'll be it'll be interesting. There's definitely nowhere to pass, you know, beyond I guess those 10 miles. It's uh, pretty one lane, pretty dusty. So I mean, hopefully if we get uh, if we get in some dust and during those passing lanes, we'll uh, obviously take advantage of it and see where we end up. What's your all time best finish at Vegas Arena? I think sixth. 
six. Got All right. Every time. So. So anything better than a six today? Are you smiling? Oh yeah, smiling under the mask. <laughs> yeah, gotta love racing in 2020, huh? Oh yeah. Well, best of luck to you guys. Anything you'd like to add? No, that's it. Good luck, Brock. We'll let Thank you get you. ready. Brock and Team Alexander Ford ready to rumble. Hope you enjoyed our chat with Brock Hager and Ryan Hancock. Truly amazing, huh, guys? Could you imagine? I want to know in the comments, too. Could you imagine going 515 miles through the desert, 120 plus degrees, sharp rocks, silt, God knows what else. It's truly a sport that requires a lot of coverage, uh, a lot of coverage by your team, your spotter, your helicopter, a lot of courage, and uh, a whole lot of support. That's for sure, guys. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is a brand new platform. Please make sure you subscribe to Off-Road Racing Insider on YouTube and like Off-Road Racing Insider on Facebook. If you like motorcycles, check us out over on Cycle Drag. That is our YouTube channel with 150,000 plus subscribers. We're always at the races. We're always there for you. Thanks so much, guys.